and welcome back to Maverick Country X. That button's a little loud in my ear. But today we're gonna get started with Blue Rank Wanger and finish all the rest of the Mavericks. Now, last time I ended with Spark Mandrel, and these are the weapons that you get from defeating him. So I'm just going to edit my repertoire a little bit and then we're gonna jump right into it. This part will also contain what little backtracking there is in the game. And although there's just a small amount of it, the way they handle it is kind of dumb. It's a, it's a Duff McWhelan case, and for those that don't know, Duff McWhelan is a Maverick from Mega Man X5, in which you had to get his weapon in order to get the collectible within the stage itself. This is the case with Boomerang Kawanger, and I think this is the only other case where that happens. Maybe an X6, but I don't remember. But anyway, let's just jump right into it. Alright, so Boomerang Wanger, we're trying the uh, the Rocket Fist this time, and this one in particular is kind of different in that if you shoot from a certain distance, it can pierce defenses for some reason. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I don't even know if that was intentional, and well, I didn't feel like trying to mess with it for too long on that one. But this is another uh, problem of. If you don't have the right weapon, things can just be a little difficult, or even slow. So, it, I think I just took a hit and just... No, I actually beat him. Okay, cool. But yeah, there's so many of these guys here. So this part of the stage, it's got to trip me up a little bit because I'm so used to having Stink and Million with weapon as X. So coming here and actually properly doing it for the first time in a while, it's like, uh, wow, what do I do? But uh, for those that don't know, you have to basically move across these sensors when they're not lit up. If you do, a laser will shoot at you. It's not instant like it was in the original SNES version, but you still need to move quick. Like that. These guys with the maces are everywhere. I just not noticing how frequent they are. And yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. I was able to I'm able to fire through the wall with this because I'm at a certain distance. I again not entirely sure what determines that. Maybe I can find an answer online if someone knows that. Or that might just be how it's supposed to be. But the weapon description itself doesn't really give that. So. But looking at the footage now, the weapon itself, well, the arm when it's fired, it actually kind of pops in front of file rather than having a full animation of it uh, com coming apart from this arm. So who knows? So this elevator section. Pay attention once you get closer to the top, because there will be a collectible that's added. So the cue is that it'll slow down and you'll see this platform. Use it to wall jump off the platform in the top left to get the heart tank. If the platform is destroyed, well then you'll have to redo that part again. So y'all notice that green container, I'm actually gonna skip past it, but I've uh, never actually opened it, nor am I entirely sure if you can. There is a ride armor closer to the top of this climbing section, but it, yeah there's another one. The thing is, I've actually never been able to get them in these little crevices, if only because the bulk of the between the bulk of the ride armor and then the the ledges of the tower just make it hard to maneuver around and actually land on. So on my attempts, I just miss the ledge or I just get hit by a bunch of enemies and I'm out of time. 
So if anyone actually knows, feel free to comment. I'm completely loose. If that's even what you're supposed to do to break them. Or if that's what even the riot armor is for. This is a rare instance where the riot armor is not even used to get a collectible. So here we go, right here. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. And I say screw it. But yes, that is a sub tank. But we can't get it yet. We have to defeat the rank one first. And he will give us something in order to allow us to actually collect the sub tank. Think about it now, I don't even think the Rider Armor can even jump up on these platforms. I think it's a little too high. I could experiment, but if being honest, I'm probably never going to play this mode after <laughs> this uh, commentary. Not the biggest fan of it, as I mentioned before. Oh yeah, the cannons have two flamethrowers. Those originated from uh, Storm Eagle, but finally they're here as well. There we go. All right, boss battle. This fight can be a bit tricky because of how he reacts. Mobility and attack power are very impressive. You'd make quite the adversary on the battlefield, Vile. If you think so, then you must know. You know which Reploid can usher in the future for us. Is this about your rivalry with X? Comparing specs directly, you come out on top, but... But what? Do you actually believe X is the one? No way. I'll see if you're operating on the spec. So yeah, Boomerang Winger makes an interesting comment in that uh, Violet is actually technically more powerful. I alluded to this earlier with the fights that he has with X and that usually does come out on top. But then they go on about this quote unquote potential that X has and they don't really go too much into it. And I don't have any subsets filled so I believe I just die. <laughs> Alright, now what's actually happening with the fight is that Boomerang Wanger is disappearing because I'm getting too close to him. I should actually be trying to fire at him from a distance. The problem with that is, I want to say that I was trying to hit him with the carbon bomb, which, you know, is my most powerful weapon in my arsenal. But right, right there, because I, was, I just shot at him, he tried to charge at me. And now I think I get the common sense to just kind of lay carbon bombs, sort of. However, if he's in the middle of an action, he won't disappear when you're approaching him. So that's something else can keep back too. But this fight's not too bad. I just made it harder than it had to be. I'd probably been better off just using my fist rather than the cover bomb. It would have taken longer, but I wouldn't be cut close. Alright, with that we have defeated Boomerang Kwanger, but we're not done with the stage quite yet. You'll notice that we got some new weapons, including the Quick Homestick. The Crescent Blast in general, they have a wider range than your standard shots, and they have a few tricks to it, but the Quick Homestick is the only instance where it can interact with items. It can actually grab them and bring them back to a vial. And that's really the only instance where you have to use it. You can't use it in the spark manual stage. That is an option. It's just not mandatory because you have the right armor in order to reach up that ledge as well. Probably use the quick home stick over the right armor if you can't see like I could. But eh, I made it work. Sting Chameleon. 
All right, stinking million stage. If you pay attention to the upper right, you'll see something shining in the background. What you want to do is just stand on these robotic logs, but I don't know the point of it. But yeah, just ride that all the way over by the tree. Jump up, and you'll get the heart tank. That's it. The stage. We also have a quote unquote right arm section. Like the right arm is not necessary, but it's necessary to get the sub tank. Not necessarily necessary to get the through this level. So I changed around my weapons a bit. I couldn't tell you the names if I'm being honest, but I will have something to show off all of uh, Vile's weapons in a later part. So what you want to do is take the right armor and just make your way through this cave. They took out the robotic rocks because yes that's the thing but you'll have to deal with these mechs that are in ride armor in this tunnel they did they were found in the stage as well but they weren't in this tunnel and what you want to do is stand right in this spot here you'll see opening up there I've been in the ride armor and you'll get the sub tank and now it's just a matter of finishing the stage Uh, the missile weapons are pretty good. They're kind of slow, but then again, it also just depends on which missile you get. This one in particular, it just fires a lot. It doesn't hit for too much, but the damage can add up because of multiple hits. The missiles, from what I understand, don't have as much, well, don't cause as much invulnerability frames on enemies. So, again, they're good for racking up damage. That shoulder weapon is good. It actually grows in size, though, as it travels, so it can actually cover a good amount of distance if enemies are far enough away. And then the uh, leg weapon creates a tornado that actually has a very long lasting hitbox, so it can act as a defensive maneuver if you see enemies firing weapons at you. It's a minor detail, but I actually kind of like how Vile completely takes off his uh, forearm in order to shoot missiles out. It's a very small thing, but it's also kind of goofy, and I, I don't know, I just find that animation amusing. On the subject of lives, I, I picked up a few, but they don't really matter. They kind of it's not as generous as say X4 and X5 where you lose your life, you just start from the last checkpoint, but you can save the game at any time and then you'll just start from that save point. Get out of my way and let me pass. <laughs> I don't think so. We are going to have to fight. If you say so, I won't let you or Sigma stand in my way. <laughs> Used to have nothing but respect for you. That's another line where it makes me think that Stinking Million is doing this for the sake of others because when you fight X he will mention uh, possible hostages and then he also mentions he used to have respect for him implying that I don't know I guess he like looked up to him it's a very weird oh okay I thought it was just gonna do it. it's some weird dialogue well I won't say weird it's just dialogue that sticks out that I wish they kind of went further with because I like the concept of uh, not necessarily the concept but the idea that these mechs do have reasons for joining Sigma not just uh, Sigma pick them and boom they're in there I enjoy the personalities and I enjoy their banter with X and Valve to that extent because you know we get some background as to why they're revolting in the first place it gives them a lot more character but 
Unfortunately, we don't go too deep into that because this is the only uh, remake in the X series. Who knows? They might do another one, or even X Dine. I'd be fine with either. So our next Maverick will be Armor Armado, and now we have Buck. That I'm, you know what? We're gonna see it later. <laughs> I'm gonna switch around my weaponry, and then we're gonna jump right into Armor Armado, which can be kind of tricky at first, but. No, he's just not tricky, if I'm being honest. But you'll see. Armored Armadillo! Alright, Armored Armadillo. This stage changes one thing in particular in that there's no minecart sections but because there's no minecart robot ride the stage goes on ooh, a bit too long for my liking it, it does have the problem of throwing a lot of stuff at you and there's also some enemies that were here that weren't before that we're going to deal with as well and I'm also kind of struggling <laughs> dealing with these enemies because I had a I did change up my arms a little bit but I do eventually get accustomed to it. And by accustomed to it, I mean just taking hits and just moving on. So because there's no light capsules, there's also no uh, Hadouken for Vile. In fact, he doesn't get anything. I believe... Uh, they only have instances where two Street Fighter moves are brought into X games. X1 being Hadouken and then... Let's see the X1 being Hadouken and then X2 being Shoryu again. So I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> again, I don't play this mode often, so I'm having a lot of brain fart moments, but it is, there's no armor showing this. There's actually a ride armor in the room where that machine came from. I could have just used that and obliterated him just like that. But I do get the idea to go back because the uh, terrain was changed to where I can't just wall jump up. You can get the extra life. And there we go. Uh, the explosion from the right armor can also pierce through the Matul defenses as well. One of the rare instances where something can actually uh, destroy a Matul when it's hiding under his helmet. And this is also... I don't know why they decided to move the classic bat from Mega Man, but yeah, that's where you find it when you play as Vile. Unlike uh, X, where you find it in the beginning, which was a very good spot to farm for lives. Granted, you can do that here, you'll just have to go a bit a ways to actually reach the bat. Despite that, I would still say this is probably... Hmm, I won't say the best stage for Vile to grind for energy, but for me, because uh, this is the stage I used to grind for energy for X, I decided to just come here anyway. It's a bit different because the type of enemies you have to deal with, they don't actually just destroy in one hit. As far as these weapons anyway, but it got the job done. Now this is where a minecart would be, but uh, they changed it, so there's no minecart. And this is where they bring the rock enemies. My problem with them is that in X's uh, story, they would appear in the same chameleon stage, but the rocks would be jutted out from the ceiling, so you could actually see where they would fall from. The rocks are in the graphic of the ceiling, so you can't even see them until they fall. And usually, they don't fall until you're right under them, and Vile moves in a way to where he's not fast enough to really dodge them, so you kind of have to have hindsight. But because I've only played this a handful of times, I'm not going to know. So, it's a sloppy design in my opinion. They could at least let the rocks hang so the players could actually see where they're coming from, because that's just unnecessary chip damage that we're taking. And if this is your first stage, for some odd reason, I don't know why you go on our first. That's, that's just dumb. But, if this is your first stage, then more than likely you're not going to get through 
And if you do, it's going to be with very little help. And then you have to deal with all of this, because these are enemies that were in Exodus Path when you ran the minecart. But you had the minecart to destroy said enemies. Actually, I think they added more enemies, but now you have to go on foot and deal with them. It's just, this is... This stage just has all the examples of why I'm not a fan of this mode, because it just has all the problems in just a handful of sections. Now this, because of no minecart section, you have these floating platforms that are found in Sigma Palace. And for some reason, they thought it was a good idea to have these enemies just spawn in when you're trying to platform. And they spawn in so frequently, you don't really have to go off screen too far. And if you're trying to take care of them, you'll have instances like that where you get stuck in the air, you don't land on the platform, and you miss, and you just have to go back and forth. It's... I did not enjoy this section at all. Just another part where I just kind of rolled my eyes at it. But this isn't only for just making a way across. Uh, there is a platform that you kind of have to have hindsight. Like if you know about the Hadouken Light Castle, then you'll your curiosity will be like, "Hey, I wonder if something's over there." So this is a trick I use. Whenever you use your shoulder cannon, you will float. So I did that there, but uh, thankfully the um, pattern was good to where I didn't need to. You can just use your shoulder cannon weapon and just float until the platform comes back. I'm under orders to destroy anyone who comes here. It doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> All you do is follow orders. You really think you can take me on? You don't respect authority. You don't follow orders. I pity you. Pity? Don't pity me! You don't know anything about me! Enough talk! Let's fight! Very childish. Oh, by the way, I died <laughs> twice! Because <laughs> I was trying so hard to figure out Armor and Armor Devil's pattern. So, yeah, it's... It's the same for X, but... Because I'm not really familiar with the damage values, I'm not entirely sure when he'll uncurl, so there will be instances where I try to run under him, but he'll uncurl, and that animation just catches me off guard, and that's where I take most of my damage, I'm being honest. He can also start guarding before the actual hitbox of the hit your attacks lands, so it actually makes me wonder if the hitbox is larger than the graphic itself. Yeah, like that, I just ran into it because... I wasn't entirely sure if I did enough damage. He also doesn't do that, I guess, kind of barrier attack where he'll um, counter with a barrier. I'm not entirely sure if that's just taken out for a while, or if it's just because of the way I approach the fight, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. It was a good fight. And with that, we only have one more Maverick to go. And that is Flame Mammoth. Flame Mammoth, I recommend not taking on first. At least have the uh, Frozen Castle from the Chill Penguin because Flame Mammoth's damage output is one of the higher ones of the eight Mavericks. I attempted to do that <laughs> when I first played it because I had the uh, the or stage order in my mind from playing as X. I was like, eh, I'll just go flame him since that's what I usually do when I play this version of the game. And he just kind of smacks you, and there's nothing you can really do about it if you're not careful. So, if you're careful, you can handle him. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely too careful. I'm a bit reckless when it comes to playing these games. So, as a safety measure, I recommend not going flame mammoth. Always still penguin, and then storm eagle if you have the speed. But if you can handle it, by all means, go for flame mammoth. So I'm just messing around with my equipment and then. Flame mammoth! 
All right, Flame Man stage because we did Chill Penguin stage a long time ago. Uh, the lava is frozen over, so this stage is actually really easy to handle now. You get a right armor right off the back. It's not even necessary for killing anything, but it's really just nice to have in order to plow through the enemies. Without it, it's still manageable, but like, eh. Why not? Whatever. So here, I mentioned this, I think, last part, but you can actually reach that ledge. I don't do it here, and if I'm going to be honest, I don't even know what's up there. The collectible that's in the stage isn't even in there. So it might be another case of Chill Penguin where it's just health pickups if you need them, but it's not necessary for collecting all the items, so don't worry about it. So you want to make your way over here is if you're coming for the... Actually, I think it's a sub tank for X as well. But if you jump over here, get clipped by that enemy because why not? You'll get the heart tank. And that's the last of the collectibles for a while. The original heart tank spot that was for X, there's nothing below so don't even have to worry about that as well. At this point, it's just a matter of reaching the stage and wrapping this up. If this is the stage order you've been going in. Again, we have these um, rotating cannons on the walls. They're found in Sigma stage, but they're very common just throughout Val's uh, uh, campaign. I'm not entirely sure why they went with that to be a common enemy, because it's more common about the tools. The tools aren't even in every stage in Rage right? And despite the place being frozen over, you saw these like, goops of... I don't even know what that is. Like, magma? Lava? Just some kind of hot material. Yeah. So I decided to go down here just because I didn't show it off as X. Nothing different, it just has some enemies that you have to defeat. Those would be hazards if it wasn't frozen over there. That's something to keep in mind. And boom, we reached the end. This past me will just hurry up. There we go. I had no idea why I was staying there. <laughs> Vile, what are you doing? If you've joined the side of justice, you can leave now. Justice? Give me a break, Flame Mammoth. I'll fight you if that's what you want. Bring it on. <laughs> you just bit off more than you can chew, Bile. I'll make sure you regret it. Power! Alright, Flame Mammoth. Uh, just like the Vex, you can cut off the trunk if you want to. I think I do give it a shot, but it takes a few. I mean, honest, I don't even know if that shoulder can in particular can even off his trunk. Uh, same applies to launch onto the same tentacles. They can be cut off as well, I just don't remember if it's this one or if it's the same weapon that can also catch. No, never mind. It does happen here. Never mind. Hmm. Oh, you know, I think I tried in the rematch and it just didn't work. What did we do? I don't know. It's been a, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been <laughs> recording this. But yeah, because we have all of this weapons and just a power up vials is a cinch. Ironically, uh, Bile has a covers more distance because of that speed power up from Storm Eagle so he doesn't have to worry about dash jumping if he comes in this fight with that. Vile, so this is your way of handling things? Yep. <laughs> Your underlings were a cinch to beat. They couldn't have been much good to you anyway. Hmm. Interesting. Why don't you come find me using your methods? I want to see you in action with my own eyes. I'll make you understand. You'll know that I am the one who holds the key to the future! 
And that's our excuse for going to Sigma Palace 1. Because Sigma basically said, you can't do it. And Vile says, bet. Yeah. See you on next part.